Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, you are joking, Rach! You, so you are joking! Well, that's big news. Oh yeah, yeah, it's huge news. Okay. Well, that and the what telescope? Away, mate, there's no time. Okay, I'm gonna need all your brains out on this one. Okay, sit down. Okay. What do we got? Oh, by word, I have just received. Yep, yeah, I have just received a speculative report direct from NASA concerning the Hubble telescope. Do you know what the Hubble telescope is? No. Okay, well, basically, it's just this big old telescope that sits up in the sky taking photos of space yeah. things, yeah? Now, it is in what's called a state of orbital decay. Right, and it's because the, uh, the gyroscopes on it are starting to show some uh, wear and tear. Now, I don't actually know what gyroscopes are. I had uh, gyroscopes on my BMX. They helped uh, your handlebars spin around when you're doing monos. Oh, excellent input, Rhino. That uh, sounds like it could operate on the same principle. Anyway, because of these gyroscope things, NASA is predicting that this Hubble telescope is going to crash to Earth by 2020, and the predicted crash site is Chinatown, Melbourne. Well, that is big news. Oh my god, it's huge news, Rhino. Huge news. Huh? I mean, there are several hundred other predicted crash sites, but. Hmm. Have you run this past the uh, science editor? Julie? Yeah. Mate, she took a voluntary redundancy about two weeks ago. Julie's gone. No way. Yes, way. Who's the science editor now? You're looking at him, mate. Wah! Yeah. Damo! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Science editor! Good for you, mate. I didn't even know you had a science background. Oh, well, it's uh, it's not an official title, you know. It's more a role I've uh, adopted sort of uh, voluntarily and quite unselfishly, I might add. You know, um, uh, a newsroom needs a science editor, you know, so I'm doing it in the um, interest of... Your resume? No. No, Ryan. Journalistic integrity. Yeah. I'm doing it for journalistic integrity. A newsroom has to have a science editor. Hmm. Have, you, have, have they listed any of the other crash sites? Oh, yeah, but mate, that's the beauty of being your own science editor, okay? You can be selective with the facts. But they are still facts, Ryan, okay? You can't just take the press release and plonk it into the article, you know, because it's just a list of all the places it might crash. You know, and people don't want to read an article that's just, uh, oh, uh, of Beijing, China, uh, Toronto, Canada, you know, it's boring. All right, uh, headline idea, okay. Uh, much needed gentrification opportunity for Chinese ghetto post-crash. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's not racist. No, 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 no. no. Look, uh, there are a lot of people in our community who make a big hoo-ha about um, mm. uh, racism, you know, uh, saying things like, oh, you know, it's in the media, it's in the press, but uh, I work in the media, you know, and I've never been the victim of racism. Have you ever been the victim of racism, Ryan? Not once. There you go. It's not a problem then, is it? Mm. Although... We did get into quite a bit of trouble for Arab Spring Chicken. You know, Liz has a pretty delicate world view. Maybe she could offer a fresh insight. Uh, no, 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 give her a chance, mate, give her a chance. Hello, Damien. Morning, Liz. Hey, congratulations on this morning's headline. What, doll bludging sword clown owes thousands in back taxes? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you liked that one, did you? I love it. Right, okay. Well, what, what did you like about it? Well, I just really like how you sort of hang your headlines on these mildly offensive plot points that are actually irrelevant to the story. Oh. Thanks, Liz. Oh, no worries. It really, like, lacks in a kind of adult complexity in a really good way. Okay. It's just that doesn't necessarily sound like a compliment, Liz. Oh, really? I, I'm, I'm trying to say that it's, it's really simple, like really shallow. I see what's happened here. Okay. Um, now, Liz, as a professional journalist, you'll come to realise that uh, precise choice of phrasing is really, really important. Okay, because right now it sounds like you're, um, 
you're saying one thing, but you actually mean another, you know. Uh, uh, linguistic exactitude is a vitally important skill for a sub-editor. Ask her about the story. Oh, of course, yeah, right, sorry. Uh, now, Liz, Ryan and I are in here working on a hot story, okay, that we've got direct from NASA. Would you like to hear some ideas for a headline? What? You've already got headline ideas? Yeah. Well, how? Well, I got the memo from Rachel and... Oh, what? She sent it out to... <laughs> okay, well, what are the ideas? Well, uh, the first one... Whoa, is... hang on. Have you written these down? Yes. So it's not really in the spirit of the job to actually think about the headlines ahead of time. You know, I mean, what I mean is like pretty much anybody could come up with a good headline idea if they spend time thinking about it in advance. You know, it's not really... You don't do... What are the ideas? Okay, the first one is Hubble, Hubble, Toil and Trouble. No! Yeah, that's a no, Liz. Can I ask why? Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Really? Because I think if you get it, it does make sense. Do you get it? I totally get it. It's, um, it's like obviously a cultural reference, isn't it? You're not all experts on culture, Liz. Right. Uh, that's okay because I think the second one is even better. Old Mother Hubble. Rubbish! Oh, I get that one. I get ah. that. Oh, I got the other one too. But it's um, just... Yeah, no, it is still rubbish, Liz, no. Okay, how about Big Hubble in Little China? No, I actually think that one's the strongest. It's not bad. Still a no though, still garbage. Yeah, it is still a no, I'm afraid, Liz. It's a good movie though. I, um, I do actually really like the Chinatown angle, but I think we can do a bit better.